now is not really a good time to buy any GPU unless you get a really good deal. The worst one that you're possibly going to buy, the newest one in fact, is going to be the RTX 3090 Ti. So I tested both just to see how bad it would actually be. Now, don't get me wrong, we're talking about bad, not in terms of performance, but when you break down performance for the dollar, definitely pretty terrible, coming pretty late into the game. It does have a few surprises, however. First, some people say that it's actually a pretty good indicator of what RTX 4000 is going to look like. Now, its sort of power design, even the cooler, is very similar to the RTX 4090 cooler that leaked recently, so that's certainly going to be something that's pretty interesting for us to take a look. This is almost a very early version of RTX 4000, and a couple things really do make sense. I mean, the TDP is 450 watts, which is pretty insane, considering that you would expect the GPUs to become more efficient over time, but certainly not NVIDIA. They become more and more power hungry in order to eke out as much performance as they can, and it also appears like the RTX 4090 will have the same 450 watt TDP. Of course, we expect it to perform better than the 3090 Ti, as it's going to have different tweaks and it's not all just down to the power draw. So I decided to test two of these RTX 3090 Ti's because after all NVLink and SLI even though it's pretty much defunct at this point it still works for a couple of situations and the biggest thing that it works for is for people to sort of make fun of you online if you post a picture of it and to say that it's a complete waste of money which I agree it definitely is but it has its purposes. Priced pretty good is a Windows CD key. Today's video sponsor is going to be VIP-CDKDeals.com. Very simple process. If you use my code CC20, you're going to get a nice discount at checkout and it's going to get rid of that annoying Windows watermark when it's not activated. So check out CDK Deals for your CD key needs and remember it will work with Windows 11. So in terms of price to performance at its existing price, it's certainly an abysmal value. You're going to get much better performance to you know, dollar that you spend, but something like an RTX 3080, maybe a 3080 Ti, but the 3080 12 gigabyte comes pretty close in most games, or even a 6900 XT if you want to go on the AMD side, and you're going to save probably half the cost. So putting two of them together definitely gets the critique that it deserves, but I wanted to see what is left to eke out of these type of applications. Now, first I'll say that there are actually many valid uses to having dual GPUs like this that doesn't have anything to do with gaming. Most people that use multiple GPUs, I'll give you some easy examples. Even if you're video editing, like with DaVinci Resolve, it's gonna support multiple GPUs. And in fact, in many cases scale pretty nicely, it's gonna give you much better performance. And and of course, if you're going to be doing 3D work, multiple GPUs tend to scale very well. People even use them for AI and machine learning. So there's certainly a laundry list of things that this setup makes sense. And some people will even say that it performs better than some of the actual workstation GPUs from NVIDIA. And even though it's not a Titan GPU by definition, it certainly fulfills that role for many professionals. So at least you know that it does have good application in terms of workstation and professional use. But then, of course, that completely falls apart when you enter gaming. NVIDIA kind of made SLI a little bit defunct. They're a little bit interchangeable. NVLink is just the connection between the GPUs, and SLI is still a terminology used. Even when you hook these up to Windows, you'll see that the SLI has been enabled. Now, it only really works in a few titles natively. It's going to be DirectX 12. Um, one game that I tested out is a game that's a few years old, but that's Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Um, actually, it wasn't too bad with the scaling. If every game could scale like this, certainly it would be interesting to have this come back as a technology. So at 4K, I did the benchmark in Shadow of the Tomb Raider on the highest setting, and I got roughly about 105 frames per second. Now, with 13090 Ti, that's certainly pretty impressive. Even on a high refresh rate monitor, you're going to be you know, hitting above 100 FPS. Game is going to look pretty smooth. When I enabled SLI, which the game supports natively without needing like an SLI profile or anything like that, it's just part of the way the game supports it. With two 3090 Ti's, that jumped up all the way to about 153 frames per second. Now, that's certainly going to be a pretty nice number if you're running a 4K 144 hertz monitor. You're going to pretty much be able to hit that 144 hertz, which is pretty impressive if you consider that 4K gaming. We would have been happy to hit 60 frames per second a couple of years ago. So, 
definitely shows you that while the technology is completely defunct, when it does work, it can provide some pretty interesting results. Now, you're not doubling the performance per se, or else you would have been over 200 frames per second. Another game that I tested out was sort of like, uh, you know, a demo for ray tracing RTX. That's going to be Quake 2. With 13090 Ti, I was able to hit 57 frames per second, and that's pretty close to 60 frames per second, considering that it has a lot of ray tracing. It's a kind of a graphically intensive game that they sort of re-engineered to take advantage of the new technology. As soon as I bump it up to 23090 Ti's, the number went much higher, around 93 frames per second. So that's a pretty big improvement. That's going to be a lot more playable, way over 60 frames per second. And it shows you that when properly implemented, it certainly can have some pretty nice effects. And then the last game that I tried was Red Dead Redemption 2. Now, with just one 3090 Ti on the highest settings at 4K, I was able to hit roughly 98 frames per second, which in and of itself is not bad at all. You can certainly have a pretty good gaming experience there. Certainly, it's going to be better performance than you can expect from a next generation console. So, soon as I activated SLI, that number went up to 120 frames per second. So, even though it didn't quite reach that more magic number of 144 frames, frames per second if you have a 144 hertz monitor that's certainly pretty impressive and while it's certainly not worth it to get around 22 frames per second um, just to get a second 3090 ti it shows you that it's not completely defunct there are some gains if you really dig deep and kind of look around now there are various other games listed not too many more you can check out nvidia's site they have a full list of games that are actually supported so it certainly isn't ideal at all and i would recommend nobody do this type of setup I just did it because it was fun. And then, of course, aside from those games, you can run some benchmarks like 3D Mark, you know, Port Royal and Time Spy. Those do take advantage of multiple GPUs, and it can be fun getting up on the leaderboards, even though it is a little bit more difficult than you would expect. You can't just throw down two 3090 Ti's without some manual overclocking and maybe some better cooling in order to be able to reach these higher numbers. So now, this doesn't really tell us anything new. We knew it kind of worked in certain situations. And of course, you should never have this type a setup for gaming this is going to be purely for workstation and you know 3d or video rendering something like that where it will definitely scale considerably better and you know buy you a lot of time that's the only reason you should use it of course some other considerations if you do have a four slot motherboard the temperatures especially with founders editions it's actually not as bad as you would think especially the 3090 ti having a little bit better implementation of the way the vram is on just one side instead of the infamous 3090 which had it on both sides and would tend to cook that VRAM um, if you're doing rendering or anything like that. So temps were surprisingly under control with a four slot system. I also tried in a three slot configuration much closer and this would overheat the top GPU considerably more. So I would definitely not recommend that type of setup. If you're going to be using both GPUs and any type of workstation or anything like that, you certainly can get away with it. It's not like it was crashing or anything, but four slot makes a big difference, especially with some good fans in the front kind of blowing all that air out you're going to have a considerably better airflow path especially with the founders edition some other 3090 ti's may behave a little bit differently but most of them certainly will benefit by having a little bit better spacing and at the end of the day it does look pretty awesome even though it's not really very useful for gaming it is for workstation use and if you consider the design of the founders edition especially in this particular build that i had it in it certainly does look pretty incredible and there's very little out there that can match the really the the colossal look of this type Type of build even though it's not as useful for gaming like i said certainly has its place in very very niche use cases all right guys so remember to subscribe let me know if this is a setup you would ever test for whatever reason of course we all know it's not the best idea remember to subscribe and i'll see you guys on the next video